questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, before I start about us, I want to give a shout out to men's basketball and congratulate them. I've said it all two years. What a great group of guys. Chris Jan is a rock star and uh, really excited about their opportunities. Uh, and then, as far as for us, you know, as Captain Obvious here, disappointed. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, we met and watched it in our locker room. Uh, I've got a lot of disappointed young women as uh, we thought we met a lot of the criteria uh, on the women's side to get in, but it is what it is. Um, you know, right now I'm excited uh, as I'm in year two because it's all about competition. I don't care if it's rock, paper, scissors, cornhole, uh, the NCAA tournament, or the WBIT. Uh, that's the kind of uh, program that I want that when given the opportunity, we're excited about it, uh, where we can compete. Uh, and then obviously we got a lot of great things when you look at it uh, and try to make it as positive as you can in front of us. Uh, the opportunity to possibly play at home uh, for three straight games. Uh, Jessica Carter, uh, two games away from breaking the most career games played in program history. Uh, and then Lauren Park Lane, six assists shy away from breaking season, season, single season record. Uh, again, what makes me excited about March, which still is my favorite time of the year, but unfortunately, like you all know, would have loved me playing in the NCAA tournament. I don't know how many times you've dealt with this being at the programs you've been at, like being on the verge of making the tournament and making yeah. this uh, tournament as well. I mean, <coughs> what's the challenge of that and, you know, the disappointment and kind of channeling the disappointment and trying to make that a positive in the next you know, week or so in this tournament? Yeah, uh, it, it's, a, it's a loaded question. So obviously uh, there's disappointment for one because as the head coach of this program, you want to put your team in position, right? It's, it's based on how you schedule and, and put them there. And I, and I thought we did that. Um, and then uh, obviously you want to send out the seniors right. Right. Any coach does that. You know, a lot of these kids came here for that opportunity. So you got to feel them. Right. Because we put so much time and we're family together uh, that when that happened last night, again, there's no words to describe that moment. Uh, we were heartbroken. But again, uh, we kind of had that talk prior to the selection show. I had a hard conversation because you see a team like Miami. All right, they obviously didn't make it either. Next thing you know, last night, they're number one seed in the same tournament we are. And then I think two hours later, we find out that they, they checked out. They didn't even want to play. They canceled out. So that's where I'm excited as a coach because uh, i got a group of Bulldogs in there, like I've said, that love to compete. Uh, and that's what March is all about. So, uh, again, as, how, as hard as that is, uh, I'm really excited as of today and right now that i got a group that wants to compete and play at home. Obviously, you guys are preparing for games, but, you know, the portal opens as well. I guess how do yeah. you kind of balance that? And are there any players on the roster that won't be available because of that? Uh, well, one, I was hoping, you know, they've added so many new staff members. I was going to see if a couple of you guys could be added to the staff <laughs> roster. Because, uh, yeah, like, man, like I said before I came in here, I think I ate a hamburger. I haven't ate since, like, 7 o'clock last night. <laughs> We've been going 100 miles an hour. Uh, between putting film together, again, that's why I love my staff and I love this program. We work. We're blue collar, we roll up our sleeves. Um, so as you can imagine, uh, our show happened after the men's. So we're talking about, what time we get out of the locker room? Eight o'clock, <laughs> you know, and then you find another 30 minutes before we find out who we're playing. So we didn't even start on film last night till nine o'clock. Uh, so we worked hard on that. And then obviously I have an announcement, uh, uh, Nyunga Goni. Uh, we had a meeting earlier this week uh, that she decided that she will not be returning. Uh, so we thought it was in best interest for the kids who do want to play that she go ahead and put her name in the portal. Uh, wish that kid the best of luck and I'll help her any way I can, but I appreciate her being considerate of our other teammates. Um, there's been a trend with a lot of teams that have decided, just like I said, Miami yeah. pass on this, and you know, Tom Green had some comments last night about it. What yeah. did you decide and the team decide that you felt like this was best for y'all to continue playing and, and not do, not kind of follow that path? Yeah, well, I, I, I'd be curious. You know, one thing that, as they talk about that, because, again, I saw that same thing, is how many head coaches talk to their actual team? Right? Was that decision made by the coaching staff or the players? And what I like as of right now at 11-10 is my team wants to play. That wasn't directed by me. And you couldn't ask for a better feeling as a head coach, again, because 
Like I said, I don't care if it's rock, paper, scissors, or race out in the parking lot, up the hill, uh, you know, you name it, that's what you want as a head coach is you want a competitive spirit. And that's what I wanted when I came in here as a head coach here is, again, we had, what, three straight years that we haven't made the NCAA tournament? Uh, I told you, I wasn't going for the long haul. I was going for the short term, and we're going to punch, and we're going to fight. And year one, we made the NCAA tournament, and unfortunately, we were just short in the, in the committee's eyes of doing it two years in a row. Uh, but again, it's, it's about the spirit. All right, and that's all I ever asked for. Are you going to win every game? No, but have some spirit and a little competitive edge about you, and let's go out there and compete. And my players told me, Coach, uh, you know, because we talked about the possibility of not being in, and I wanted to know where they were at, obviously because of the climate uh, around the country. And they said, Coach, we want to compete, and so that's why I'm excited today. Does it feel like, uh, I know you said the players wanted to keep playing uh, that motivation and, and desire to prove themselves, especially to get at least one more opportunity in front of their home fans. Does it feel like that's still there with this group right now? Yeah. Yeah, and we, we're going to meet later at 2. I mean, as you can imagine, they need 12 to 15 hours. I mean, there's a lot of comparisons you could compare this feeling. I mean, those who've played athletics, it's a hard feeling. Again, you got to remember the time we put together. It's a year-round sport, pretty much. We train in the weight room. We grind uh, for this one moment. One shining moment's the best. Um, and obviously, this one shining moment for us in March will look different than last year. Um, so they're heartbroken. Um, but, you know, we got to regather, and it's like life. Sometimes you get punched, but you got to get up. And that's the message I try to send to them as the head coach of this program. So uh, I'll have a lot more of those answers here at, uh, at 2 o'clock when I see the team. Obviously, you talk about you know the goal always being the NCAA tournament. When, when you miss it, what kind of is the message to you know recruits this summer and, and going into next season? Yeah, I think it's one postseason play, right? Um, and I think it's realization too, and they know where we're at. Again, what I inherited and where we are at. You know, to think that we're 20 win back to back season. Uh, you know, having back to back season wins and then signature wins. All right, that's where you know. It's huge for us. That's where it's hard. I'm not going to get into the negative, but when you look at our resume, LSU. Ole Miss, A&M, Jackson State, uh, me and Nate were comparing, looking at it today. We played 14, uh, 18 tournament games this year on our resume. All right? So, again, you're coming to the best league with a top 20 fan base. We got everything that we want in front of us. And then, like I always tell, me, tell them, help, me, help come here to help me beat the top teams. Don't go and do the, the norm. Let's do something different. Um, and I think it's reality uh, when you look at we did it in year one. And then in year two, we knocked off some of the biggest names in college basketball. So, the vision's still real. And, and like I said, unfortunately, uh, you know, we all know the elephant in the room. Uh, when you look at, and I studied it last night because, again, I want to put us in position next year to get there. Uh, the NCAA committee obviously made a big emphasis, uh, like no other, on how you finish this season. All right, you look at Notre Dame as a two seed, uh, Texas over Stanford, uh, Colorado, who had a phenomenal season, missed the top 16. Uh, so for whatever reason, uh, you know, again, there's a bunch of criteria, but, you know, they put a big one on that. And obviously we all know in this room we fell on the short end of that and we have nobody to blame but ourselves. Robbie. Speaking of the matchup, I mean, you have ties to Georgia Tech, obviously. And, yeah. Um, I'm sure you've watched them extensively last night. What's your early thoughts on that matchup? Uh, well, thank you, NCA, because they put this tournament together, too. I'm a two seed in this tournament, and there's no way in God's green earth Georgia Tech is a, what do we say, a seven seed? Uh, yeah, come on. Like, what in the world? Uh, you know, and we got a work cut out. That's where, to your question earlier, my message at 2 o'clock, you better roll up your sleeves and bring it. This is not an easy first game. Uh, you got two conferences who tied uh, with eight teams in, in the tournament, ACC and SEC. So then they give us an ACC opponent who I think we checked tonight or this morning, 10th. Well, they finished 10th. And, again, I apologize for being a little slow here. We've been up all, uh, all night doing film. Um, but, again, here's the scary part about Georgia Tech. They finished 17 and 15 on the year. Okay? They had five games this year. There was a five-point margin. That's their season, too. If they finish those games, they're, they're an NCAA tournament team. And then three of those teams were against top 25 teams. Um, so as, as much as I had no sleep last night, I'm about to have more no sleep this night. And to your point and question, I appreciate that. Georgia Tech obviously has a special place in my heart. I was there six years. Uh, Nell Fortner was the second coach uh, to give me an opportunity behind Joe Champy, so I'm forever grateful to her. Um, she's a triple package as a head coach. Uh, you think first and foremost as a broadcaster early in her career. 
a phenomenal basketball coach who coached the Olympic team, WNBA, and in college. Uh, and then third and, and most important, she's a great person. Um, so I know those kids at that institution because I worked there six years. They're blue collar, hardworking, uh, have a lot of demands on them from an academic standpoint, um, and they're really good. So it's going to be an absolute war here at home, and that's another thing that excites me about March, playing in front of our fans. Uh, I can understand how you could be disappointed how things unfolded, but again, I keep telling you, look at the long haul. Look what we've done in two years. Look how we're fighting, and especially to your question, Robbie, when kids across the country could quit – and not even determined to play. My kids choose to put on a uniform and keep fighting, and I don't think there's anything else that you'd want in life than a bunch of Bulldogs who are proud to represent this university. Looking at some of the you know, winners and, and runners up the last you know, five, six years and what was the WNIT, not yeah. the WBIT, just um, they're the programs that have springboarded you know, to, to be pretty good and, and be you know, top seeds this season. So well, why do you think that's been the case for some of those teams, and, and is that part of the message, I guess, to the players? <laughs> Yeah, it, it is, but also you got to look at the climate and the NCAA. That's a great question, but it's hard because now with the portal, it, it, the same rules didn't apply three years ago, right? So a lot of this was done to have a young team that's going to stick together uh, and then carry that energy over to the next. I plan on doing the same <laughs> again as of today. I think I speak on every coach when you speak at these press conferences. You're excited about your team, but you never know what's going to happen. Um, but for me, it's again, what do I stand for as the head coach? It could have been easy for me, like I tell y'all, uh, to wave the flag and say the season's done, uh, go play golf, uh, go enjoy some free time because God knows with the new NCAA rules we don't get any, but that's not how I'm wired. Uh, I want to compete. Uh, I want to lead the way, and, and I know my staff does too, and we want to have the right players in this program uh, that don't come here for spring break, that would come here to play deep runs in March, and that's where the message we're sending uh, right now with you know making this statement playing in this tournament. Sam, you, you mentioned that uh, WBIT being made for, for young teams and, and young players. Yeah. You obviously had, had a bunch of freshmen that got a lot of experience in, in the SEC already. How much do you feel like these extra games will, will – well, I think it's huge because, again, it's, you know, if you think about Miracle Shepard and, you know, Jazz and, and Near, who obviously that's a top 16 recruiting class, they only got one game of Survivor Advance. So, to, again, to get another situation, especially for them, uh, to wet the whistle or wet the feet, I don't know what kind of words you want to use there, but um, to get that opportunity is huge. You can't get enough of that because, again, I've got huge goals for this program. Um, so the more we can get this kind of environment only helps for the future. Any more questions? Right, Thanks, everybody. Appreciate y'all.